Good morning and welcome to Sheep Week 2022. My name is Keith Belford. I'm the Director of Marketing Communications for the Wild Sheep Foundation. Uh, today is Wednesday. Today is Exhibitor Move-In Day. We're here at the Reno Sparks Convention Center. Uh, apologize in advance. They're moving in some big taxidermy displays, so you're probably going to hear some carts rolling in and out. Uh, with me today is our good friend Jana Waller. Um, most of you know Jana from uh, her television show and series on the Sportsman's Channel, Skullbound TV, been running for nine plus years now. Uh, you did a little shift here recently. Yeah, two years ago I shifted from the network TV to digital. So I went to Carbon TV. Um, in making that decision, you know, um, I thought, uh, you know, there's obviously YouTube and some other platforms that can be kind of discretionary against hunters. Carbon TV is owned by hunters and uh, never going to put a red sensor over anything. So I went over there two years ago. I'm all digital. It's a free platform. You can download the free app on your phone or watch okay. it on your TV through Roku, Fire Stick. Um, now, if you have a Samsung TV older than uh, 2017, you can get Carbon or just simply, you know, aircast it from your smartphone to the TV. <laughs> so it's been a good move to go digital because it's free and everybody can watch it. Cool. Yeah, we were joking earlier. I, I can't keep up with all these networks and technologies and Roku sticks. And yeah, yeah. For, fortunately, I've got a, a teenager that, that helps <laughs> me out with all that. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we here, are here at Sheep Week and speaking of sheep, Somebody here drew a sheep tag, and uh, we're going to talk about that today. Congratulations, Jana drew a, a, a bighorn tag in Montana's Bitterroot Valley and uh, had quite the campaign, as most sheep hunts are, so we're going to visit with her a little bit about that. You did bring us a little, little highlight video, reel. highlight reel, yeah. which will be awesome. We'll watch that in a little bit, so hey. <laughs> did you did you go online and check your app and it said oh, successful? Yeah. Yep, I was actually with my business partner Heath Helgert. He does all my editing and a lot of my camera work. We run bear baits together and have for about five years now over in Idaho. And so we were pulling into the gas station and Heath said, I'm gonna run in and get some drinks. Hey, check FWP results are out today, check. And I checked and it was I literally cold chills through my body and I had to check it again. I actually logged out, logged back in to check it again because I just couldn't believe that I read Bighorn Sheep Successful. And uh, when Heath came back out of the gas station, I started screaming, you're not going to believe this. You're not... And we were so excited. And uh, we, have, we have 15 days of actual boots on the ground hunting. It was unit 250 in Montana. It's actually one of the um, better draw odds, and which is why I put in for that unit um, with the help of Robert Hanneman. He's with Hunt and Fool. He's always been so great at helping me decide where to put in for things across the country. And I've uh, been putting in there since I moved to Montana. And uh, yeah. yeah how, how many how many points, how many years? Um, I think I think 10 points. 10 I think points. I had 10. Yep. Yep. And it uh, the sheep were just really weird this year. It turned out to be a, a great October. We I spent four and a half days uh, mid-October, and we saw 41 sheep. Um, no, no big rams, no adult rams, just two young rams, uh, 38 ewes, and one little lamb. Which was one lamb? One lamb, which was really disheartening. Um, I've heard a lot about that mm. unit and the predator issues that they have, and I witnessed it myself for sure. That's saw, not a good. saw a wolf, tons of wolf tracks, saw cat tracks. But uh, then come November, everyone I ever talked to, um, I wanted to do a DIY hunt. I wanted to do it myself, but of course I tapped all, all my friends who have any knowledge about that unit. I've never been in that unit before. And they all say, don't worry at all. Come November, the big rams come out of the wilderness. You never know what you're gonna see. It'll be sort of an eeny, meeny, miny, mo thing. <laughs> yeah, no, that was, and I know other hunters who actually put out a great video on YouTube uh, from 2017, and it was like that for them. But we just could not find um, any, any sheep whatsoever, even all the 38 ewes gone. And so it was pretty challenging. I didn't see a mature ram until day 13, and he was cresting over a ridge, and we got on his tracks and did mile after mile, and just dis he just disappeared by the time we got over there. And then it was day 15 where I notched my tag and put together that That's little awesome. highlight reel, so just to show people the excitement, the emotion, and uh, hopefully get them 
maybe excited. I never thought I would have the opportunity to hunt sheep, and if I, I got the opportunity, it's a possibility for anybody. Absolutely, I was, I was fortunate in 2005 to draw, uh, not in your area, a place called the Clark Fork Cutoff, okay. which is over by St. Regis. And I, you know, my wife called me and said, hey, you got something in the mail that says sheep tag. <laughs> Because that's when they were mailing them, yeah. they weren't posting them. You're like, could you read that again? <laughs> yeah, I go, no, no, you know, no, it says sheep tag. And uh, I, I bring that up because I had a similar deal. I go, this is a sheep hunt. So I was there, you know, day one, combing the mountains. I was going to take it all in. DYI, I was hunting by myself. I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything for almost the entire month of September. Uh-huh. And I was going weekends and, you know, doing all that sort of thing. October 18th, I saw 21 rams. Oh, 21 rams. Rams. Wow. They just, like you said, they, they show up. Magically appear. You know, this is a heavily timbered, I know, yep. 250s, yep. painted rocks, a lot yep. of timber. Um, yeah, they just came out of the woodwork. So it was... So you know, exciting. But they didn't do it for you. No, nope, huh? they didn't. And the funny thing was... If anyone knows Montana, they know that 270, um, major highway goes through 270 where, where all the sheep love to hang out. And I don't know if it's the minerals in the, in, the, in the rocks or I don't know if it's just feed or whatever, but they're always there. And um, sure enough, one day, my, Heath, my cameraman, um, his father was in town. They took the day to go over and see what, what was happening in 270. And I went to 250 myself and just scouted all day and I didn't see a thing. And he said, rams everywhere. You know, so they were doing what they typically do in 270, but why they just disappeared. And I ran into both the other two tag holders in my unit and we all shared intel. And the same thing is like, where did they all go? Where we all go? saw the same sheep in October and they, they got the same intel I did. Just wait, whatever, ha even if you see big rams, wait till November so you can really see what's there. And we, all three of us, in fact, um, one of the gentlemen, He's, I hate to say his age, but I would say, I don't, maybe he's 60, late 50s, and just in the most incredible shape. I've heard from friends, he's a huge shed hunter. And he put on some days over 20 miles. And it's rough terrain in that unit. Oh, yeah. And he was still just coming, coming up, up empty, coming yeah. up empty handed. Yep. He ended up, he ended up shooting a ram, I think the last weekend. And uh, the other tag holders shot a young ram the last weekend as well. And it was all they saw. So it was just wow, tough. I feel super, super blessed that I was able to uh, find a mature ram. And the, the Heath's amazing. The footage, the footage we filmed, not just of rams, but of all the other species. The the deer, <laughs> you'll see in the clip, the deer, some beautiful big bull elk in the snow at 80 yards. You know, just just incredible wildlife. We saw incredible wildlife. Yeah, that was a, another thing that I'll always remember about my sheep hunt is. I saw incredible mule deer, I saw incredible elk, black bears, Yeah. and it was, I mean, you have a sheep tag in your pocket and you're going, well, that's cool, got no interest in you today, Yeah. you know, yeah. And, and just either watched them or just, you know, kept moving on, yeah. and, uh, you know, I'll just never forget that having a sheep tag is different. It you, is. You look at things differently, you approach things differently, Yep. Um, you know. You're kind of hunting a foot or two off the ground just naturally because of the euphoria of, Yeah, I'm hunting I have a sheep, sheep tag. Yeah, yeah, I have a sheep tag. Exactly. It's funny when I, you know, in the clip we show the shot, but it was day 15 and we had about a half hour light left and uh, we were sitting in this saddle. We had snow the night before and that morning we saw a ram. We got on his tracks, followed him and that ram was by himself because we know because of the tracks and bird dogging like a whitetail. I think he was looking for the ewes like we were, you know? <laughs> and he was literally going canyon to canyon. And after, you know, a few miles, Heath and I were dead. We were, you know, I was, I bet I face planted it a half a dozen times that day because of the snowfall and not knowing what was under the snow, rocks or sticks, and you'd step on a log and slide. And we finally gave up after a few miles because that ram was just bird dogging and he, he you know, left us in his dust. And uh, anyway, in the afternoon, went back and looked up and Heath saw a ram actually on the same spot we kind of gave up in the morning. Whether it was the same one or not, I'm not sure. 
drove, got hiked back to the truck, drove around, hiked back up the mountain, and we just decided to spend the last hour of light on this saddle. And I, it's so funny that how this happens, and it's even funnier when it's on video like it is, but I told Heath, I'm just gonna walk over here and check the back of the saddle. What if he came low and he's on the back of this basin? And I did that, and I walked about 40, 50 yards away from my gun, and I hear pss, pss, and I look over at Heath and he's going like this and I look up and there's a ram staring at me and I'm looking and my rifle is 40 yards away from totally me. Totally busted. Yeah, and you know, as any hunter, if that was a mule deer or an elk, you're not moving. And after like literally what seemed like minutes, I asked Heath, should I go for it? He just said, go for it. And I just scurried in the snow over to my rifle and luckily that ram kept kind of coming down the ridge and wasn't spooked off and uh, you'll see in the video what happened. But uh, yeah, it was pretty exciting. That was day 15 of the hunt. And I don't know, I've had some amazing experiences in hunts over the last 30 years. I don't know if I've ever been more just plethora of emotions to notch a tag because I know it's probably, it could be the only- Once in a lifetime. Once in a lifetime hunt, yeah. And it, it, would, it was ticking, time was ticking. Time was ticking, yeah. yeah. Well, let's let's quit teasing, folks. Let's <laughs> let's let's tee up this uh, this little video, and uh, we'll come back and visit a little bit more. Sounds great. Like I've said so many other times before, I'm not sure anything else in life delivers the spectrum of emotions that hunting does. I'm so glad we had to work so hard for it. It just makes it so much more special. For me personally, on on my journey as a hunter. This was the pinnacle. Oh, and Mr. Bear has sheep. We got seven sheep. It's awesome. We got sheep already we got spotted. Sheep. First morning we're out. There was only one lamb in the 41 that we had spotted that first time in the unit, and that's not good. Says a lot, I would have bet, about the predators in this area. 78, 78, 78, 10, 78, 10, 78, 10, 78, 10. You don't need permission. I'm going to throw you in the river. <laughs> <laughs> Another beautiful, chilly day here in Montana. No sheep yet. Back at it, day eight. He's right above us on this mountain. I can't take him, but I feel bad. It was getting so frustrating too because we knew that sheep are rutting, even in the unit next to mine, and they're rutting big time. I think we may have a ram skull. And we are gonna hike. It's 100% a ram skull. You think? Yes. You're going 100%? I'm going 100%. <laughs> yeah! I mean, here we are up here in front of a lifetime, and the biggest ram we find on the unit's dead. You know that movie Groundhog Day, where you kind of feel like you're in the same day over and over? <laughs> Actually, I don't feel that way because we keep seeing really cool stuff. Just a beautiful part of Montana is all the wildlife. You know, when you're on a hunt, you typically see all the species except what you've got the tag for, and that's what was happening in our unit. But nice big muleys in the rut's a good close second. Day 13 of the hunt, things started to change. Oh, we've got sheep spotted. We don't know what they are. There's still three canyons over. And they just vanish. That was definitely, for me, the low of the hunt. As if we need more complications. We can see about 75 yards. The night before day 15, we had gotten a pretty good snowstorm. We're driving into my favorite spot, and I glance up and I see a ram on the top of the skyline, and we're like, let's go for it. I'm just so deflated that he's gone. It was like the second low of the hunt, and time's running out, and I'm getting nervous. 
Later on in the afternoon, Heath and I drove around to the back side of the mountain to glass, and the second Heath got out of the car, he said, I've got a ram. So he thought of a great plan to drive back around, hike up, and we were just gonna sit on that saddle where we know that ram in the morning crossed and wait it out. I'm about 40 yards away from my gun and I hear pss, pss. And there is a beautiful big ram staring down at us. And I finally whispered to Heath, should I run for my gun, should I go for it? And he said, go for it. when Heath came over to me and gave me that big hug. I don't know if, if any other time in my 30 years of hunting big game, if I've ever been more excited to have a hunt come to fruition. I can't believe this happened. We did it. I just want to savor every second of this. This has been by far one of the toughest, most challenging hunts I've ever done. I'm so glad we had to work so hard for it. It just makes it so much more special. And it's just, this is one of the highlight moments of my life right here. I'm just filled with so much gratitude and exhaustion. <laughs> and I just never thought this would actually happen. This is just absolutely incredible. It'll definitely go down in my life as one of my favorite all-time moments. Jeez. <laughs> I still, like, I've seen it 20 times. Oh, man. And I still tear up every time because Oh, it was just so emotional. It, it's hard to explain it. Like you said, it's different when you've got that tag in your pocket. I mean, we have all been out there, well, most of us, and, and seen sheep while we're deer hunting, bear hunting, elk hunting, antelope hunting even. And I, uh, yeah, I, and it, it's truly a question people ask me all the time. What was your, what's your favorite hunt? What's your favorite hunt you've ever done? Which is such a hard question. I mean, to me, the veteran hunts that I've done, I've done a lot of amputee elk hunts that have been just so emotional and s watching them notch their tags has been highlights of my life. But this one for me personally, it definitely was the pinnacle of my journey as a hunter. Well, you, you could see it in there and it, it was the same for me. There, there's so much in there. I mean, it's a short clip, but the highs, the lows, I forgot about the deadhead. Oh yeah. Yeah, that deadhead. And again, it's so funny, when Heath did a highlight reel, the first round he gave me back was 18 minutes. And I said, Heath, that's not highlight, you know? And he's like, I can't, I can't cut anything else cut? out. I can't do it. And I'm like, you gotta. And uh, you know, he had probably five minutes of finding that deadhead. Cause for me, being a big shed hunter and a skull artist, so any skull yeah. I find, I'm just so excited. I feel like it's a gift from God. But that one, we were actually, I, you can't really understand it because it was so, cut so short in that video, but we were driving on the road and I was looking up, look, trying to find sheep, ewes, whatever, looking up through the moon roof and that's how, driving on the road, and that's how I spotted that. And I actually thought it was a moose paddle because it was upside down and the big white curvature of the base. And I said, uh, J John was driving, and I said, stop, stop, stop. <laughs> I, I think, I, and he slows down and he's like, you want me to You back? didn't slap him? Uh, well, the thing, but yeah, yeah. Well, I do it so much. I think I see an elk shed. I think I see a deer shed all the time, and it's never anything, you know? And he's like, do you want me to back up? And I said, yeah. And poor guy, now he'll never, he always has to back up now. <laughs> and we get out, and I, I was 75% sure it was a ram skull because it was, it was like 200 yards up, straight up, could just see a little bit of the white. And uh, he said 100%, and so we went running up there and, of course, found the skull. The sheets weren't anywhere near it, though. But once we said, let's split up and start zigzagging, it was maybe three steps, and John saw the first sheath. And they're in mint condition. They're beautiful. I believe that ram was killed the winter before. And uh, so he was just, just a little bit of the nose bones, you know, chewed away. But 
Yeah, he's that, that uh, one, mid-160, 165, I think, and an eighth, mm -hmm. that deadhead. So I'm having it incorporated into my mount. I'm doing a shoulder mount like this on a pedestal. Nice. But inside the pedestal under lights is the deadhead. So. And your, your ram, that view from the back, just... Always impressive the mass yeah. on these things. Like but. any animal, right? When they're walking. Yeah, away, yeah, like, oh. but <laughs> you know, you gotta you gotta give sheep the the extra nod yeah. uh, because that that back view and you know, fortunately our Montana Rams, you know, get the mass. Yep. Um, beautiful, yep. beautiful. I mean, there there's just so much in there. Um, I'll have to ask, what are you shooting? You know, these guys want to know yeah, what, what yeah. do we use on, what I, do we use on sheep? I, the last two years I have shot, and I usually play around with all my guns. I'm, I'm quite the gun collector. And uh, I've got the 26, the 28, the 30, the 33, all Nozzlers. Wow. Yeah, that's. <laughs> More that, amazing taxidermy. That's, that's a, for sure. That's a squeaky wheel. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, the last couple of years, I've pretty much strictly used my 28 Nosler for everything. Okay. For elk, uh, antelope, it's a little overkill for antelope, but long shots. But that 28 Nosler, I shoot 180 grain Acubon, Nosler Acubon, and um, decked out with Vortex. They've been such a great partner of mine all 12 years. Okay. And uh, yeah, it was uh, definitely 140 yard shot, chip shot. Uh, I don't really like frontal shots, um, I, but because I was in the prone, felt rock solid, 140 yards, you know, very doable, sure. uh, as you see. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, I literally, it felt felt like a dream that day. It really did. Awesome. Thank you. Totally Thank you awesome. so much. It was well, pinnacle for sure. Yeah. Well, we certainly appreciate you sharing with that. We would love to show this at our banquet tonight. Tonight is the welcoming banquet. Yeah, um, I'd be honored. And this is good juju to get us started for Sheep Week. Yeah, certainly. So. Well, thank you. Um, you know, for our virtual audience getting an opportunity to see this first, congrats to you. But uh, all the folks that are piling into Reno, they're going to get a treat tonight. Thank um, you. So I appreciate that. You I, bet. Uh, like I said, I've always. I don't know. I always kind of felt it was just, um, you know, maybe maybe happened down the road. I've been putting in long enough. You know, that's that's part of the problem is when, you know, people, some people, some average, I just consider myself an average public land hunter. By the time we have tons of points, you wonder, can you do a sheep Can hunt? you do a sheep hunt? You know, and so I was uh, pretty excited to draw it when I still have got a bit of energy left. <laughs> And, uh, and you've got, what, a seven-year wait now before you can apply again? Yeah, yeah, and Jason yep. Matzinger gives me hope that it can actually It can happen. actually happen. And yeah. I did see, you know, John in there. John has been a great uh, partner with Wild Sheep Foundation, auctioneer extraordinaire. We'll get to hear him tonight, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yep. Uh, good dude. Such and, a good dude. Yeah. I was, uh, he, so he joined me for the first four and a half days out that we had. And then he had to go back. He lives in Utah. I live in Montana. Um, he joined me for another three-day block in November. In that three-day, four, maybe four-day, three-and-a-half-day block, we only saw that one young ram that we climbed up after. That is the only sheep that we saw. But I found the deadhead maybe with him. Found the dead so that was so exciting for us to share. Um, he, of course, would have loved to have been there when I notched that tag, wasn't able to. I mean, day 15, that's a lot of time, days off of work for him. Yeah. And so uh, he wasn't able to be there, but he was half half of the hunt. So it was fun to share that with him. What was your uh, extraction like? Actually, we we really lucked out. I've had some pack outs in Montana that have been real killers, where I can't move off the couch for a couple of days. But the, it was because of that. We got literally got a foot of snow that night, the night before day 15 of the hunt. And we Heath and I were able to drag him from the top of the mountain all the way down. Um, I knew that I was not going to do a full body mount. I'm kind of got addiction to taxidermy, and my space <laughs> in my house is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. So I said You need that. a bigger boat. Yes, I do. I do definitely need a bigger boat. Um, but I knew kind of what, especially when I found that deadhead, I knew that I wanted to incorporate that somehow into it. And so, so we, the, uh, the we big just, drag. Yeah, we just both really tried to keep, you know, just he was just dragging on the back end, and actually it didn't even hurt the hide at all. And we were able to drag it all the way down to the road, which was so nice. Didn't have to quarter him up. Sweet. Yeah, that was yeah, really that's, lucky. Yeah, that's lucky. Super I had lucky to, in a sheep hunt. I had to quarter mine up and took me three trips. Yeah. 
and I had got you know scree and cliffed out and headlamps and oh yeah the the normal goat rope so yeah that's I was surprised how incredibly delicious that ram was so i've heard mixed reports yeah i've and heard I've, mixed bags too mine yeah. was mine was a little chewy maybe because Good. mine was alone i you know what i mean maybe he really didn't i'm sure he was looking for use but maybe that has something to do with it i don't know maybe um you know adrenaline hormones in their body maybe that has something to do with it but so i had um i took the back straps and um tenderized it. I have this, it's called a, I'm, I'm probably saying this wrong. It's Jacquard. It's a meat tenderizer. You can get them on Amazon. Best thing I ever bought for all wild game. And you just put, it's got like a hundred needles that come down out of it. And I just tenderized it, marinated it for 24 hours. My neighbor, who's an incredible chef, Carrie, she's amazing, came over and she pan seared it and we threw it in the broiler. And it was, it was seriously delicious. Good. I would, I would say that anyone eating that would not know that that wasn't a delicious beef steak. Yeah, my guy was full on rut. It was he? Oh yeah, yeah. He, he was banging heads and you know, he was he was getting it on. Yeah, and, uh, that's cool. Steaks were good, ribs were good, uh, but there was a couple of cuts that were just a little chewy. Yeah. Flavor was great. Yeah, But they, I've only, I'm trying to spread it out. You know, they don't provide us all that much meat, unfortunately. So I'm trying to be really careful and, and use it when I've got company. You know, a lot of people are like, what did it taste like? Well, let's cook some up. I've only really had the good cuts, so I haven't gotten into the some of the other less less desirable cuts yet. But uh, no, I was I was so pleasantly surprised how delicious it was. Yeah. Awesome. Well, congratulations again. Thank you so much. Montana gal does well. Love that. Yeah. And uh, looking forward to seeing you at the show here and uh, tonight at the banquet. Yeah, I'm excited. The full episode won't even be out for a whole nother year. Oh. I'm putting together for 2022. Um, on Skullbound Chronicles is, is an all veteran season. So 13 of my favorite veteran hunts, and that's what I'm doing this year. So this being the last hunt I filmed, actually I filmed one before it, but I really wanted to save the ram hunt. So the full episode, and knowing Heath, it's gonna be about 45 minutes long, because <laughs> we got so much great footage. Good stuff. Yeah, that'll air January 2023 on Carbon TV. Is that mule deer okay that wiped out on the ice? He's fine, let okay. everybody know he's fine. I had a lot of people on social media, we put a really funny clip of him, and in slow-mo, it looked even funnier when he's going across the whole water. But it was so funny, he like got up, and I swear he looked around to make sure no one saw him. And, <laughs> Walked his Nobody way. Nobody saw that. No one saw that yet. Walked up the hill. He was just fine. Well, the funny part is he could have crossed probably 100 yards down. Water was open. Heath and I, for a second, were wondering if we were going to have to do a buck rescue, you know, as he crashes through the ice. But uh, no, he was fine. Just a little embarrassed. All right. <laughs> very cool. Well, Janet, thank you very much. Congratulations. And we'll see you tonight. Yeah, thank you. You're I welcome. appreciate it.